to keep it about Jesus Christ. And so therefore, if I keep it about Jesus Christ, I will please God and Christ will take care of all of those things. I just want to give you a, um, uh, give you just, just one, one quick example. Um, I've been really concerned over some of the things in the political world that are going on, especially when it comes to voting rights and those types of things that are that seem to just be a, a political football right now. And uh, my uh, parents and grandparents and great great grandparents bled literally for the right to just cast a vote and for someone to put their hands on that and to manipulate it in the way that it's being manipulated by some is personal to me and is hurtful to me and it is angering to me. And so I was thinking about that in particular today. And, uh, and, and the Lord just told me, he says, he told me, you pay attention to the gospel. I'll take care of that. And uh, I just want to say that to anybody who has an issue, whether it be that issue or, or another issue, that is very, very, that, that is hard, that is painful, that is frustrating, that is angering even, or that engenders fear. Um, God will say to you, just as he said to me this morning, you focus on Jesus Christ. And I am the one that changes things. I am the one that protects and covers. And you stay in the word and stay in the Bible and stay in those Proverbs and understand my wisdom and how it works. But you focus on Jesus Christ. So whatever that issue may be for you, whatever side of the issue that, uh, that you find yourself on, um, if you and I are children of God, first of all, he will make his will clear to us and he will, he will, he will tell us what right is from wrong. And, and when he does, he doesn't expect you and me to go out and make right happen. He did not raise you up for protest. He raised you up for conquest. And your conquest is in the scriptures. Your conquest is on your knees. Your conquest is in your witness. And your witness is in Christ Jesus. People will know him and understand him and how he thinks and operates in, in his will according to the witness you present. Now that, my friends, is a full-time job. And if I'm uh, just, just caught up in all the other jobs, there's no way that I can rightly, rightly witness of Jesus Christ in the way he would have me if I, am, if I allow myself to be caught up in the things that are going on around me. The, the kingdom of heaven, beloved, is within. So protect what the Lord is doing within and trust him for everything he's doing without. Let's say that again. Pay attention to what God is doing within you and let him handle all other things. In other words, Matthew 6, seek ye first the kingdom and his righteousness and all these other things will be added to you, okay? Don't fight for the add-on, okay? Fight for the kingdom and the kingdom's within you. So um, that's my commercial. Um, I think Jackie's got it uh, pulled everything together. You good, Jackie? Should, uh, can we go forward? Maybe, maybe not. Thumbs up. I don't know if you can see it. <laughs> it's uh, no, I'm sorry. You're not on my screen here. Uh, oh, okay. No, okay. Thank you, sweetie. That's, that's, that's good. Thank you. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, I'm, I'm believing today that there is wisdom from heaven that is prepared for those that are listening to my voice. Um, there's some things that will be said that have been said and will be said that is going to um, just lift the cloud. Um, just, just to blow away every, every vestige of, of confusion um, and fear uh, so that we can see clearly the clouds are blown away, uh, the smoke is blown away, we see clearly uh, because we stand on the foundation who is Jesus Christ, our house is built on the rock. And we don't look to any other. We're not looking for any other wisdom. We're not looking for any other solution. We're not looking for any other savior. We have a savior and his name is Jesus Christ. And so we commit all the things we care about to you.
We commit our politics to you. We commit our policy to you. We commit our country to you. We commit we commit uh, those in, who have authority and the things that have to do with our lives. We commit them to you. And we know, Father God, that you are in control. And that is where we place our confidence. So today, um, we are focused on you. We take our eyes off of everyone and everything else. Uh, help us, dear God. Lead us in worship, Holy Spirit. Lead us in worship. For the Bible says that the Lord is seeking those uh, who will worship him and we will worship him in spirit and in truth. And we want you to find that truth right here among us. We came to worship and we came to worship in the spirit. Thank you, God. Bless our time together in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, everybody, we're here to give God the praise he deserves today to lift your hands with me. Everybody needs compassion, a love that's never failing. Oh, let mercy fall on me. Everybody needs forgiveness, the kindness of a savior. i 
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. You are a good, good father. Hey, everybody go ahead and unmute and give God a shout. He's worthy this morning. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, everyone. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Lord. Um, as I pray, beloved, take your hands and just to set them in front of you and just receive from the Lord right now. Father, in Jesus' name, the Bible speaks of your abundant life. 
and uh, Jesus speaks of life more abundant, more abundant, Father. And that's my prayer to every single one uh, that's listening to my voice uh, enjoys life today, today, more abundant than ever before, because our understanding of these things is greater than ever before. Father God, I pray that you remove every hindrance, everything that stands between us and you. Um, we come, Father, with uh, the desire to, to put out all the effort that is necessary for us to please you. But we know that without the Holy Spirit, that is not possible to please you. So we are no longer going to come to you with the best that we can do. We're going to come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. And that's this morning how we pray. We pray to you in the name of Jesus, for he is the only one who can rightly, completely, and consistently please the Father. He is not only the only one, he is the only standard. He's the only way, the only truth, and the only life. And it is him we come to you this morning, in him. Dear God, not of any strength of our own. The one thing that we bring to the table, Father God, this morning is faith. The one thing we bring to the table is open ears and open hearts to hear and to receive from heaven. So increase our wisdom and our understanding this morning, dear God. Our hands are out so that whatever it is that we need in order to, for you to accomplish your will in our lives, we know that we have received it from you because we asked in the strong, the complete name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, beloveds, and amen. Um, I, I just do, I want to remind you that you have what you need. I want you to just take a moment, say that to yourself. Say, I have what I need. I have what I need. Um, that, that's important for you and I to approach God um, as if we know that we have what we need. I remember praying to the Lord uh, one time and I was pretty desperate uh, at that moment in my prayer. And, and, and I, I, um, I got up for my prayer and, and the Lord spoke to me very, very clearly. He said, I want you to go forward and act like you have everything you just asked me for. Act like you have everything that you just asked me for. So I want you to do that. I want you to, to, to listen to what I'm going to share with you today and then to go forward from having heard these things, um, knowing, believing, knowing that you have what it is that you just asked God for. That's faith. And faith, beloved, comes by hearing, the hearing by the word of God, which is I'm going to share with you this morning. And faith, beloved, is what pleases God. When you believe God, when you believe that he is good, and when you believe that he's going to help you where you need help, or you believe that he is going to give you the character and the integrity that you so desperately want. I believe I'm speaking to a, a people that, that want the Lord. Uh, I, I do believe that. I believe that very clearly. I believe that you want the Lord. And uh, and because you want the Lord, I believe that you will receive the Lord. I believe that you will have every single thing that you ask him for because your heart is right. Your heart is true toward God. And God is going to give you, according to your faith, exactly what it is that he has ordained for you to receive. Be satisfied in that, beloved. Uh, so here's the word of God for you this morning. It's in Romans 12, verses, verse 1 and verse 2, I believe. Um, uh, it says, uh, Jackie, if you would place that up there for us. Um, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. <laughs> and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want you to say this to yourself this morning. I want you to say, I am a living sacrifice. I am a living sacrifice. I'm gonna, I'm gonna share uh, with you from some of my notes here if I can, can get them in the right place where I want them here. Um, this is the things that I'm praying about and that uh, I believe that you specifically today need to hear. Now, the power of Jesus Christ, the, the gospel of Jesus Christ, rather, has the power to bring us from death to life. Somebody say hallelujah. Amen. It has the power, the gospel, the power to bring us from death to life. The kingdom of God is the realm 
in which we learn to live a life that's worthy of so great a salvation. Um, the, the, the salvation of every single soul, beloved, is, is the sole province of God in the Holy Spirit. Nobody is saved because they said a prayer or because they heard a sermon. Nobody is saved by anything that you and I have done. We're saved because Jesus gave his life and shed his blood. That's why you're saved. We're not saved because we believe that Jesus gave his life and shed his blood. We say because Jesus, <laughs> Jesus shed his blood and gave his life. And the Holy Spirit gives us the faith to believe. And so I believe that every single salvation is a sovereign act of God. And you're not saved because of you and I not saved because we are any better than anyone else who was saved because the Holy Spirit gave us the ability, gave us the ear to hear and the eyes to see when it comes to Jesus Christ. And so the kingdom of God is, is what Jesus brought to us in himself and gives to us within, within us by sending us the Holy Spirit that appreciates salvation. Salvation is not just a begin, the beginning of something. It is not just, it's not the end of anything rather. It's the beginning of everything. When you're saved, you have not arrived. <laughs> when you're saved, you are now on the way. And I think, I think that's a fallacy of, of so many. They think that, that now that I'm saved, that that means, you know, all that it needs, you know, that, that covers me. It does not cover you because your salvation is not the end of anything. It's the beginning of something. And the proof that you are truly saved is that you walk with God. The he who endures, she who endures to the end is saved. Okay, you're not saved because you're a Baptist. You're not saved because you're a, you're, you're a Jew. Or you're not saved because you, you're, you're anything other than washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and you are walking out a life that proves your salvation, that ratifies your salvation. And I'm not here for anybody to cause anybody to question their relationship with God. But what I am here to do is to encourage you, encourage you to examine yourself, examine yourself daily to see whether or not I'm walking in the salvation, walking in the way that proves my salvation. I don't have to prove anything to God. The Holy Spirit in me actually works these things out. But what do I bring to the table? I bring the faith that allows the Holy Spirit to have his way and to be glorified in me and not grieved. There are Christians who grieve the Spirit and grieve him away. Grieve away his power, grieve away the work that he would do in us because we don't come to God as a living sacrifice. But when we do, the kingdom of heaven it, it, it increases within us, it multiplies within us, and that abundant life that God talks about giving to us, we receive, we receive it freely, and God continues, continues to move the furniture in our life out of the way so that Jesus Christ can have straight way to the will of God through you and through me. Now, Jesus came to offer new life through his death, and he pours his spirit upon us that gives us the power to live victoriously in a perverse and dying world. We are in a perverse and dying world, beloved. It's, uh, no matter how much fragrance we try to pour in this dying thing, it is a dying thing. And I don't say that so you and I can be morbid or you and I can in any way be cynical or we can point our fingers at others who don't have the life that we have. I say that because the truth is, is the only thing that on, on this earth that, that God really, 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 truly cares about in the eternal sense is you, is the church. You are the only one on this earth because of Christ who lives in you that has eternal life. You are the only one. And, and I believe that the entire universe is set up to make sure that you and I maintain life and health and a witness toward Jesus Christ by the way we live and the witness, that the, the, the love we exude and the witness we, that, that, that we walk. Everything, I believe every single star, I believe every single system out there in the galaxies, all of it is geared to you and I having life on this earth because this is what matters to God out of the entire universe. Now, I know a lot of people say that's a pretty uh, man-centric kind of uh, viewpoint of, of this vast universe and we can't be the only important things in the universe. But who said that? I don't believe that to be true. I believe, according to the scriptures, that the only thing that matters in this universe, the only thing that matters in this universe is Christ and all that belongs to Christ. Because the rest of it, the scripture says, is going to be rolled up like a scroll and tossed away. The rest of it is going to burn. And I mean the universe, the rest of it is going to burn. And out of heaven will be issued issued a new heaven and a new earth. 
That is what matters to God. So all of the stuff out there, the farthest flung stars, I believe that they are part of, of what it takes for the atmosphere of life to exist on earth, for you to live and for me to live. I think life is so intricate and so precious that it took the entire universe and how it works to make this atmosphere on earth conducive for life. I believe that every single star, whether it be Jupiter, whether it be the sun, whether it be the sun, uh, sun light years and light years away, all of them play a part in, in, in supporting life on earth. Because at the end of the day, Jesus did not come to give his life for the universe. He did not come to give his life for the black hole. He did not come to give his life for the stars and, and, and the, the, the celestial bodies. He came to give his life for you. And all of those things, all of those things, to the far-flung reaches of the universe are there to support what Jesus loves. You, there's not a single renegade molecule in the universe. They all serve God's purpose. And you, beloveds, are God's walking, breathing, living purpose. If anybody wants to know what the purpose of God is, they need to just be able to look at you for a couple of hours. And they'll see what the will of God is. They'll see what the victory of God is. They'll see what the life of God is. So you and I should never struggle when it comes to our self-image and our, and our, and our self-esteem because it is found in the God who designed and fashioned the entire universe to support you and to give you life and that life everlasting. That's what it means to be saved. And that's the understanding that we're coming to when we pay attention to God. So, so... Uh, when we receive and walk in the Holy Spirit that Jesus gives us, you know, our grasp of reality is elevated to the realm of the spirit. And that's where I'm speaking to you this morning. This, these are spiritual things I'm speaking, Th that the entire universe is geared toward life for you and for me. And, and, and that grasp, when we grasp these things, it manifests, it manifests in the most natural and ordinary ways. In other words, once we gain this wisdom and this knowledge that everything that God made everything for us and for our benefit, it doesn't make us haughty. It doesn't make us proud. It doesn't make us arrogant. It actually humbles us. It humbles you and me. I am humbled by the fact that God loves me this much. We just sang the song, you're a good, good father. You're so good. And all of the answers that people are searching for are in Christ Jesus. Uh, and, and so when we when we grasp that, it humbles us. And so one of the primary ways that we know that God is having his way with us is that it humbles us and we present ourselves to God in service. And I want to maybe redefine just a little bit or, or more deeply or finally define what service really truly means in, in, in the spirit. See, the maturing Christian does more than serve. She is a servant. And her offering is more than task-oriented activities, but is derived out of a sense of being. That's why I talked about our being. I talked about our, our value. I talked about uh, about how everything um, is, is is everything that God has done in the universe is to support us, so that we have absolutely no doubt about how important we are to God. But when we look at that spiritually. Uh, that humbles us. It doesn't puff us up, but it humbles us that God would think of me in that way. And, and so therefore it manifests in service to others. And remember when Jesus uh, in, in, in John 13, it says, Jesus, knowing who he is, knowing where he was going, understanding who he was, knowing his, his esteem, his self-image was solid. He knew who he was in, in God. He knew who he was in the Father, that he took off his robe, he girded himself with a towel, and he washed feet. When you truly know who you are in Christ, you will serve his purposes in other people. That's how you know that someone really knows God. They are serving God's purposes in other people. And, and, and we're gonna talk particularly about, about that in a moment. But so, so therefore, you don't serve because that's what you do. You serve because that's who you are. And what you do is derived of who you are, not the opposite, not the opposite. We serve because of who we are. We don't serve out of convenience, we don't serve because it's easy. We don't serve because people think we're wonderful because we serve. We serve because we are service. We know who we are in God. We know how valuable we are in him. And the proof that we know that is that we can lay ourselves aside and we can serve other people. Remember the two greatest commandments, love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your energy, all your effort, 
and your neighbor as yourself. So when you love God and, and you know that God loves you, it will manifest in loving your neighbor the same way you love yourself. It'll manifest in you seeing the good in your neighbor, even when there may not seem to be a lot of good to see. It, 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 it enables you to serve when you in your own energy would or your own volition would do something different. I'm speaking once again, beloveds, to the spirit in you. I'm not speaking to any energy of your own. I'm speaking to the inner gay of the person of the Holy Spirit that lives in you and how he works himself out in you because he will serve others through you if he's truly in you and you're truly giving his giving him his way. And so you serve not out of sense of needing to serve, but you serve because you are a servant. That's just who I am. So that's what I do. Just like this, the song said, you're a good, good father. That's just who you are. And you're perfect in all your ways because that's just who you are. Beloved, the perfect God is in you and he works himself out perfectly through you. In order to get there, we have to set ourselves aside. That's where the real work is. That's where the rub is. <laughs> in, in order to be this person that is rightly rooted and grounded in the knowledge of who they are in Christ, in order to be that person, and in order to, 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 to get the advantage for, for the advantage of me being that person, for the blessing of me being that person to be manifest, I have to put this guy aside and let the man, Jesus Christ, who lives in me, have his way through this vessel. That is, beloved, your calling. That is your calling and how it works out in you may look different than the way it works out in me, but that is your calling that God will be manifest and people will be served and blessed through the Christ that lives in you. Now, Jesus made it clear that he came to serve and not to be served. That's the first point, beloved. That's one of the first points of us really getting a hold of what he's saying to us and when he calls us a living sacrifice. Jesus did not come to be served. Jesus did not come to be an influencer. Jesus did not come to hang out with sinners. I've heard it said, oh, Jesus came, he hung out with sinners. Then Jesus did not come to hang out. Jesus never hung out with anybody, not a, not a second in his life. He lived, he didn't hang out. He didn't just goof around with guys. He just didn't just hang around with, with men. Every single place that he went was for the purpose that Christ that would be manifest in the hearts of men and women who have recognized him for who he is. Okay, so when, is, when it is rightly said that he spent time with sinners, he spent time with tax collectors and prostitutes and, and lost folks and, and thieves, and, and, and he spent time with these people because those are who he came to save. He even spent some time speaking to those who he knew would reject him because he came to save them too. There are some of them that wouldn't understand who he was until he was crucified. He knew that. And he's, that's what he spent his time doing. He, he said, Jesus made it clear he came not to serve his purposes, but he came to serve the Father's purposes as it pertains to us. And so every point of his presence is so that his Father could be known. And his Father's goal for my life and your life, his Father's will for our lives will be manifested. So Jesus came to work. He came to sacrifice. He came to give himself. In John 5, 17, it says, but Jesus answered them, my Father has been working until now, and I have been working. So when you see Jesus working, you're seeing the reflection of his Father. When you see what Jesus cares about, you see the reflection of what his Father cares about. He simply did what he saw his father doing. And if we are his, we will do what we see Jesus doing. So that therefore we can understand the passage that you present yourselves, your bodies, a living sacrifice, which is, by the way, just your reasonable service. It's just what you ought to do. It's not that big a deal. We can't make a big deal out of the fact that we're sacrificing for Jesus. Oh, I'm suffering for Jesus. I'm sacrificing for Jesus. Oh, aren't I wonderful? Yeah, yeah, you're wonderful. It's fine. It's good. Let's not let other people tell you you're wonderful. Okay, it's that's not. We're not trying to be wonderful. We're not trying to be wonderful. We're not trying to be great servants. We're just seeking the Lord's will, moment by moment, and doing the little things that God counts as big things. Let, let me let me. If anybody's a preacher here, you know, there's a tendency for us to think of ourselves as doing a great thing. But it's not important for a preacher to do great things. It's important for a preacher to do little things and let God do the great things. It's a dangerous thing to be thought of as a great preacher. 
It's a dangerous thing to be thought of as a great man. It's a dangerous thing to be a man of great influence. It's a dangerous thing. I'm not saying that, that God doesn't make some men great preachers or, or give men great influence. That's not the point. It's a dangerous thing for me to see myself that way. If God does that, let him do it. But the most important thing that I do is I present my body, which is the, my body basically in, it, it in body embodies all that I am inside of this shell, inside of this tent, so to speak, inside of this body dwells the, the invisible part of me, my mind, my, my emotions, my will, my heart, um, you know, the, the, my character and, and, and my spirit, which is made in the image of God. It dwells in this body. So when I present my body a living sacrifice, that means I bring all of me. I bring all of my attention. I bring all of my effort. I bring all of my resource, everything that, that, that can rightly be called mine. I bring it and I sacrifice it. I give it to God. So the work that we do must reflect the work that Christ did because he brought his all, his body, even to the point of the cross and gave it for the father's purpose. And he in particular had a purpose that you and I don't have. You and I cannot accomplish what Jesus accomplished. Um, God did not call me to, to, to give my life for you. God did not call me to do that. Jesus gave his life for you. And, it, and that's all the only life that needs to be given. If God does call me to lay my life down, it is to lay my life down for Jesus, lay my life down for him and his purposes, not for you, but for him because he's your savior. Nothing I can do can affect your salvation, but reflect Jesus Christ and reflect him accurately. So the work that we must, uh, the work we do must reflect the work that Jesus did and his work involved the presentation of his very being, his body presented alive for God to do whatever he chooses. A living sacrifice, by the way, is an oxymoron because the sacrifice is a living thing that's offered up to be killed. Okay, so you say living sacrifice. Those are two opposite things. The sacrifice is something to die, but we're called a living sacrifice. So what that means is within you dwells life and death. I'll tell you what I mean by that, is that God is able to pour life on me in any place I am willing to die. Any time I'm willing to die to my own way, my own will, my own benefit, my own uh, self-interest, any time I'm willing to set that aside and give God that place, he lives. Beloved, God will not live any place in you that you're not willing to die. Jesus said, unless we lay down our lives, we can't live. We, God lives in people who lay down their lives. You, you and I live, if we're in Christ and we live well, we live what called, we live by what we call resurrection power. Well, in order to be resurrected, you have to die. Okay, we want to be resurrected. We don't want to die. <laughs> Let me speak for myself. I want to be resurrected. I want to live resurrection, powerful life, and I don't want to die. I am not saying that you and I ought to be happy about this, happy about dying and, and all that, but that, that, that this God is not speaking to our emotions. He's speaking to our spirit. Remember, I told you, he's not talking to you. He's talking to the spirit that dwells in you. The spirit understands, the spirit in you understands that when I give up my way and my will, then God has space to have his way and his will be done. But as long as I am doing everything that I can to get my way, or even what I think is right, then God cannot and will not. He will not come in and take control of your will and make you present yourself a living sacrifice. He will not do that. That's why Paul says, I beseech you, I encourage you, I, I admonish you, I, 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 I just jump up and down every single day, want to, want to just get, get you excited about the opportunity to lay down your life so Jesus can rise up in it. If you will die, Christ will live. And, and there's no other terms under which death looks like a good thing. But as you and I know, I'm not talking about a physical thing. I'm talking about a spiritual thing. I'm not talking to you. I'm talking to the spirit who lives in you. The spirit who lives in you says to you, give me space, give me room, give me time. Let patience have its perfect work. Give me the opportunity. Give me 
your effort. Come to me first in the morning and say, Lord, I know you've given me that to do. I know you've given me a job to go to. I know you've given me people to deal with. I know you've given me, uh, and you've trusted me with these things. And I, and I am going to be faithful to do what you've given me to do. But my attitude and my heart is that all of this, I'm doing in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to do it the way you would have me do it because I'm dying to my way of thinking. I pick up my Proverbs every day. Why do I pick up my Proverbs every day? I pick them up so I can understand how God thinks and I can set aside how I think and pick up how God thinks. I read my Proverbs every day because some things in this world make me afraid. Some things in this world, I, I'm, I'm looking at things and I'm like, Lord, why do the wicked seem to prosper? Why do they seem to go on and on and on? And why as bad as things can get, they seem to get worse. And why do people get worse? And how do these, how do these people, end up being in charge of things. Lord, help me. But he says, you present your body to me today, a living sacrifice. That's your work. But in order to do that, I have to take my mind off of those things, which they would naturally be on, and put them on him because of the spirit. So my encouragement to you, dear God, is to pick up those Proverbs and to pick up the word of God because you, you, you hear God speaking to you in the spirit and you're able to understand what it is to lay down my own understanding so I can receive his understanding. And it's a very practical thing. It's a spiritual thing, but it works itself out in the practicalities of life. And you will find that the man and woman who does that is a consistent source of wisdom and encouragement in life. That's how you know a person is laying down their life. They are a consistent source. Jesus says we will be like fountains. And what does a fountain do? A fountain flows. If a fountain doesn't flow, it is just a waste. Okay? A giver that doesn't give, a servant that doesn't serve, a car that doesn't run, <laughs> it's, it's, it's just junk in your driveway. Move that thing so that God can give you the spirit that does work, that does run, that does flow. God wants to flow in you. God doesn't want to sprinkle on you. God does not want to, to uh, what, what they used to call it, the, um, the um, not sprinkle down, but the, uh, um, the trickle down. <laughs> that's that's, that's a, an economic term, uh, a trickle down. Who wants a trickle? I don't want a trickle. I don't want you trickling on me. I don't want Christians trickling on me. I don't want Christian trickle. I don't want Christians trying to be nice to me. I don't want tr Christians trying to trying to preach the gospel to me. I don't want I don't want any of that. I don't want you trickling on me. <laughs> I want I, I want to be around Christians who flow. Okay, who the Lord flows through. Who who the, who you can go to a Christian get a cold drink of water every single time. Every time. A cold drink of water every time. If you show up here on Zoom on Sunday mornings and I trickle all over you, you know, that that's really, you know, at, at, in a, a few minutes after we finish, you're like, you know, dried up again. You know, nobody needs to trickle. We need a flow. We need, we want God's abundant life. And that's what happens. Now, if you hold on a part of your life and give God a part of your life, you will trickle. You will drizzle. God doesn't want drizzle from you. When it rains, let it pour. Okay, God doesn't want a little bit of fruit from you. When Jesus comes to you, I don't care what season it is, he comes to your tree, he's looking for fruit. Don't be like the fig tree, didn't have any fruit when Jesus showed up. It wasn't the season for figs, but you and I are to be fruitful in and out of season. So that when Jesus is looking for fruit, he finds fruit. And the reason he finds fruit is because today, today you offered your body a living sacrifice. Today. What you did today was wonderful. But what you do today, because Jesus might show up to your tree today. And he's looking for fruit today. You can't say, well, you should have been here yesterday, Jesus. It's never going to work for you. <laughs> God is looking for a flow from you today. And what is flowing from you is the spirit of God. So the sacrifice is living sacrifice. We, we are alive to Christ. We are dead to ourselves. We are alive to Christ. We are dying to the world. We are alive to heaven. We are alive to the kingdom. We're dead to the world. We're not found where we used to be found. We got, we have new things going on in our life and we can't drag the old things into the new season and flow. You can drag the old things in the new season if you like, but it will stop you up and you will go from a flow to a trickle. And Jesus does not come to a fountain for a trickle of water. 
That never works when it comes to the kingdom. Let us not be a church that trickles. Let's be a church where there's a flow. And every time people come among us, they say, surely God is among that people. Let me move on here. The, the greatest joy of a Christian is a freedom to fling himself, herself, upon the Father and to do whatever the Father asks with complete abandon. Isn't it good to know that God could call? There's some people you know that God can call and, and fling them anywhere. And they will go and they will accomplish the, the will of God and come back with testimony and come back with even more joy than they already had. Uh, do you know any Christians that, that, that continue, continue, that, that have continued in joy and continued in service and continued in fruitfulness for years, for decades at a time? Do you wonder why that is? Is it because they learn to die to themselves? And there's no perfection in them and themselves. The perfection is in Christ. I know you. I know you all. I know how it is you flow. And my encouragement to you always is that you are to flow 365 days a year. None of us in our own strength can do that. That's why I'm not talking to you. Talk to the spirit that dwells in you, same spirit that dwells in me. We are to flow. And, and it, I, a friend of mine contacted me not long ago to, to, to speak at, at, at his uh, church's uh, yearly conference. And he said, I went and I listened to some of your sermons online and all that. And he said, and he said well, nothing's changed. Nothing's changed. It's just, he hasn't changed. And for all the ways, the same, he's preaching the same gospel he preached when I knew him then, when I invited him to speak to my people 10 years ago. He's speaking the same gospel that he was speaking. He's serving the same, same spirit, same spirit. The only thing in you that it can, by the way, can afford to be the same is the spirit. That's the only thing that affords me the same. Okay, so when I see you 10 years from now, I don't expect you to be the same on the outside. I don't necessarily expect you to be living in the same place or, or working the same job or doing it. You may well be, and that may be the will of God, but that's not the same I'm looking for. I'm looking for the same spirit. I'm looking for the sweet spirit that, that I saw in you and that we walked in when we were together. Same spirit. She hasn't changed. Wow. She's still serving God, and she's serving God with joy and gladness. So I want to finish with this. I want to finish with this. You and I are simply doing our duty when we deliver ourselves to him, submit ourselves to him, present ourselves to him. Remember how many times I told you, you look in the mirror every single morning in your mirror in the bathroom and smile and go, ta-da, here I am, Lord, present myself to you one more time. And so I'm doing the court, ta-da, yes, ta-da, here I am, Lord, you know, just stretch your arms out. Say, yeah, all of it, Lord, all of it, take it all. It's all yours. It's all yours. Have it freely. See, that's how the kingdom of God works. And, and if only a few, I, I, I want to say this as a, as, a, as, a, as a matter of wisdom to you. Only a few come to understand and walk in this dimension of love and devotion. Because remember, Jesus said in Matthew 22, 14, he says, for many are called, but few are chosen. Many, many, many say yes to Jesus, but few continue to say yes to Jesus every day. Many want life. Few are willing to die. Many want prosperity and power. But few are willing to sacrifice and die. Remember when Jesus and the disciples were in the temple and he was speaking to them about watching people as they gave. And there was a rich man, he came, and he gave, he gave a big offering because he's a rich man, he gave, and then there was a woman. And and, and we remember remember her to this day by the widow's might. And the might is the smallest unit of currency in that time. It's a penny. And she gave her pennies. He gave his thousands. She gave her pennies. And Jesus said, she gave more. Why? Because he gave out of his bounty. She gave out of her poverty. Hers, beloved, was a sacrifice. His was not. Hers was a sacrifice. He wouldn't say there's anything wrong that he had a lot of money or anything like that, but he had not come to the point in his giving where it really cost him anything. He gave out of his plenty. He shaved a little off the top. She, when she didn't have anything to give except for what she was going to live on, gave anyway. That's what it means to present your body as a living sacrifice. That you give 
and it costs you something. The difference between uh, a, an offering and a sacrifice is a sacrifice costs you something. You had plenty of other things to do with that offering that you could have done. And it wouldn't that's not necessarily a bad thing or anything wrong. But you decided that that is going to be given unto the Lord. And it costs you. You would have done something else with it. You would have bought something really nice with it. You would have, you would have, you would have uh, gone somewhere really nice with it, but you gave it to the Lord. It costs you something. That's the difference between a sacrifice and any other giving. And God calls you and me to sacrifice. Many give, few sacrifice. Many want life, few lay down their lives. Beloveds, many are called, few are chosen. And those who present themselves a living sacrifice to God are few. Now, I'm not telling you to go out and to abase yourself. <laughs> don't Please don't hear that. I'm not saying go out and make yourself poor. I'm not saying go out and 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 um, and flog yourself and uh, and humiliate yourself, and then God's pleased with that. I, I don't believe in vows of poverty. By the way, I just I, I just don't I don't see that anywhere in the scriptures. I don't see that that's what He's called us to do. Um, but if God trusts us with seasons of lack, it is so that our that by grace and by faith, we might learn to depend on Him and not on ourselves, and not on others. So beloveds, this living sacrifice is not a morbid, it's not a morbid version of you. It's not a self-loathing version of you. Oh, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, I'm nothing, Jesus. Stop it, that doesn't, that, that doesn't appeal to the Lord at all, at all. Get, get, rise up, put your shoulders up, square your shoulders, raise up your chin, smile at Jesus and go, ta-da, here I am, Lord, I'm yours do with me. I'm offering you my best. I'm not offering you some, oh Lord, I'm just a worm. You can, but if you can use a worm, Lord, use a worm. It's like, no, that's not what God's after, beloved. You do not have to humiliate yourself before God. Humble yourself before the Lord. There's a difference between humiliating yourself and humbling yourself. God is not impressed by how much you sacrifice. He's impressed that you walk in the spirit. And when you do, then he's pleased with that. And so you and I uh, must purpose to refresh our commitment to doing the Lord's will every day. And when we do so, our lives will take a joyful quality. You know, this person who's submitting himself to Jesus is a joyful person. If joy comes out of them, they'll come, come out like, I'm suffering for Jesus. That'll, win, that'll really win a lot of souls, won't it? Oh, get saved so you can suffer for Jesus like me. Oh, oh man, I'm just suffering for Jesus. I can't do anything but fast and pray because oh, the world is going to hell and oh, I gotta suffer for Jesus. Oh, Lord. And be, beating your flesh. Nah, stop it. It's not it. The person that is a living sacrifice has more joy than anybody else. They have enough joy to, to, to share. That's why I personally, uh, 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 my own personal testimony, forgive me for talking about myself here, but that's why I keep singing. That's what my, that's what my sacrifice looks like. Because if I keep offering to God, as long as he allows me to and asks me to and opens the door for me to, that is my living sacrifice. And I know some people think, well, that's what your talent is. That's what your gift is. Well, a gift is not a gift until you give it. It's not a gift until you give it. If you're a gifted person and you're not giving it, if you write poetry for Jesus and you're not sharing the poetry that you write for Jesus, if you, if, if you make garments for Jesus for the poor and you make them all and put them in your garage, God is not, there's no joy in that. God is, God is not, not magnified in that. Your gift is not a gift until you give it. And the one per way that you know a person is a living sacrifice is they keep giving the gift that God gave them to give. They keep giving it until God tells them to stop. And then he'll give you something else to give. What is it that you keep giving? What is it that you keep giving? That's a sign that the Lord is working through you, that this is what I do. Some of you have a spirit of generosity. Don't hold back. Give. Some of you have a spirit of prose and praise. Praise. Some of you have, spirit of, have a gift of dancing. Dance. 
Some of you have, are, are really intellectually gifted. Okay, well then break things down for the rest of us who aren't as intellectually gifted and help us to understand the things that God is saying to us. Now there's some of us who are speakers, speak, but let it be the utterance, let the utterance be of Jesus Christ. A gift is not a gift until you give it. And you know people that are living sacrifice to God because they've never stopped giving the gift that God has given them to give. Give it, stop holding back on God, stop holding back on his people. Present your body a living sacrifice and God will continually flow through you in the very unique and special way that he flows through you. The Holy Spirit is fiercely original and your gift is different than everybody else's and we're not complete without it. Give it, stop holding back on God, show up, show up and be ready to sacrifice. Get beyond yourself. Until you are giving something beyond what you would normally give, something you're comfortable with, something that makes you feel good about yourself, you're not giving. That's not a gift. That's a bribe. That's the difference. A gift is different. A gift is about sacrifice. God gave his son the greatest gift you'll ever receive. And he gave his life. Will you give yours? That's always the question. You know, the first song I ever recorded as a Christian artist was Have You Given Your Life? And the lyrics are, have you ever thought about giving your life to Jesus? You ought to think about it now. Tomorrow's not promised and yesterday's gone. Soon we'll all have to move on. And that's the, the thematic uh, to what I'm sharing with you today. Um, it's time to rethink things to rethink what it is that God has presented to us and to rethink it in the spirit because he tells us in the same passage that we're speaking about this morning, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Think differently. Think in a new way. This is a new way of thinking. Um, two more points. Service is a joyful duty to God's children. It's joyful. Grudging service is not service. Okay, there's something else. We express our gratitude to Jesus by obeying his commands, loving one another, and serving the Father as he did. Jesus never served himself. Never served himself. Breaks my heart for so many of us preachers um, who serve ourselves at the expense of the people. Serve our own aggrandizement, our own ideas of ourselves, and call it faith. It's not faith. Okay, it's something less. Faith serves the Father's purposes. And faith doesn't have to be ratified by my prosperity. It doesn't have to be ratified by my prosperity. That is antithetical to the scriptures. That's not the Bible. That's some other wisdom. Finally, well, I say finally, but I actually got two more points. I'm sorry, my math isn't good today. When God transforms and renews us, our works will advance the kingdom and glorify our Father just as the as Jesus did. Um, if, if you're going to measure your effectiveness in the kingdom or whether or not what you're doing is God's will, then measure it by who advances by your service, who is benefited, who is blessed, who is a better, better Christian walking with the Lord in a better way because of you. Who? Now we can go out and serve the world. We can take the church's resources and serve the world and clothe the, the naked and feed the hungry and, and house the homeless and, and that type of thing. We can do that. But we can do all that and nobody knows an ounce more about Jesus than they did before all of our efforts. But if you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ to people and people get saved, then all the housing and the clothing and the food is added to them. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Do not worry about what you're going to eat and what you're going to drink and what you're going to wear and how you're going to get there and what he said, she said, and who shot John. Don't worry about any of those things. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. We do all the things for people that God would do if we preach the gospel and get out of the way. Preach the gospel. 
get out of the way. Stop trying to be great. Stop trying to be a great servant. Stop trying to serve people greatly. Preach the gospel. Jesus is great. If you're great and Jesus is great, somebody's unnecessary. Do not make Jesus unnecessary because of how good you are. Get out of the way. Let God do this. Now, finally, <laughs> we present ourselves, when we present ourselves, we're no longer serving out of our resources, but God's. So we can give our all and still have more. Our gifts are out as God's bounty and the abundant life he pours through us. Isn't it good to know that if I lay down my life, if I sacrifice and give when it hurts, if I serve other people even when I'm tired and when I don't feel like it, if I do what God told me to do, especially when I don't feel like it, when I'm kind to people who haven't been kind to me, uh, when, when, I, when I'm patient with people who have been surly and, and who, who have been inconsiderate to me, isn't it good to know that I will never run out of the energy of the Spirit? I will never run out. If I serve in my church, I will never, and I serve out of the right spirit, I will never, ever, ever run out of that energy and the joy to serve. Never. If I give in the spirit, I will never, ever, ever run out of the, uh, 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 of the willingness and the joy in my giving. If I sing in the spirit, if I preach in the spirit, I will never run out of the resource because it's not me. God's using this vessel, this life that I've sacrificed, and now it's his. And he can do whatever he wants with it. And guess what? God never, ever runs out. Never runs dry. Never runs low. <clears throat> God is ever flowing, an ever flowing fountain, ever flowing fountain of love and joy and kindness. So beloved, my last admonition and encourage to you, encouragement to you is to, I want this to manifest in this very simple way this week. Be kind. Just be kind. Um, when you would be critical, catch yourself. Looking like I was getting ready to say something right there that probably didn't need to be said. Huh. That didn't, I mean, it may be true. It's not going to build anybody up. You know, I was I was getting ready to to I remember being in line one day doing in a clothing store, one of my favorite places in the world to be. I remember being in line one day and I had uh, in, in my arms a pair of jeans, a nice shirt, probably a tie and, you know, whatever else. Oh, some socks. Let me get those. I could afford it. I got... So I'm standing in line and the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he told me basically that I could take that money and I could give it. And that day I took everything back because I calculated how much it cost, of course. And I put it all back on the shelf. And that next day, I put that money in the offering. I wish I could say that I always do that. <laughs> but I'm not required to always do that. But there are times, there are times, like I said, this is not about you figuring out what you need to do. This is about the Holy Spirit. Let, let the Spirit speak. <laughs> it, don't try to be noble and don't try to be anything. Just listen. And there'll be times when the Lord will redirect because he wants you to give him a sacrificial offering and whether it be anything of material or not. But there are times where we could use our time a certain way and the Lord will say to you, what, maybe you need to use that time of going to walk with me. Or, or, or maybe you need to use that time to, to, to sit in the backyard with your, with your husband or your wife. Or maybe you need to use that time to, to you know, just to give your energy to your granddaughter. <laughs> Uh, uh, or just maybe your neighbor just just might you know could use a conversation just just present yourself make yourself available maybe you need to learn your neighbor's name see it's practical it's just it's just, the spiritual thing works out practically and maybe god is calling us to be a kind people um a living sacrifice is a kind person i've never met a person who's a living sacrifice who's unkind they're kind and they're considerate and they're kind in the small things as well as the larger scope of things. So 
if you don't do anything else with this word that I, gave, that I share with you today, uh, uh, receive it fully and let it manifest in today, this coming week, kind words and kind actions because you've laid down every single thing that you could possibly be offended about so that Jesus Christ can get glory through your kindness. Amen. Father, in Jesus' name, I know that, that the people you've spoken to today have received well what has been shared. And let us share it and spread it all over the world that you have made available to each and every one of us. And if each and every one of us individually does this, then it will reverberate this kindness and this, this living sacrifice that we are and all of that, that means will spread throughout the entire world. That, by the way, is how the gospel is preached. The gospel is preached by people who simply live the life that a living sacrifice lives everywhere we go. And we reach and touch people that we will never know until the day when we stand before you. And you say to us, well done, good and faithful servants. Thank you for all the good and faithful servants I'm speaking to today. The ones who are willing to sacrifice of theirs, of their life, of their time, of their energy and their thoughts. Those things which are most valuable and give them to you so that you can use us for your purpose in other lives. As good as you've been to us, use us to be good to others. We love you, Father God. Thank you for the Father's house. Thank you for the sweetness and the generosity and the, and the consistency and the uh, maturity of this remnant. Thank you that in this cell of the body of Christ, you are ministering health and you are ministering wisdom and strength and kindness through us as well as to us. And we'll, for, well, we look forward to meeting together again in a particular venue, but that's not the most important thing. The most important thing is when we are gathered together, there you are in our midst. Because we're gathered in the name of Jesus for your purpose. Be magnified today in every household. You know all of our cares. I commit everyone who's listening to my voice and everything they rightly care for. I commit those things to you in trust and in faith and in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Amen, beloveds. Go ahead and unmute and give God the shout he deserves. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Thank you. Hallelujah. The good father. Good God. Beloved, I hope I hope that word is good to you and good for you. I hope it's exactly what you needed today. And um, the last thing, uh, lay aside everything that in any way takes away your joy and your peace today. Look, give it to God. Give it to God and be joyful and peaceful today. Um, that's your portion in the Lord. Amen. Amen. I, I, I look forward to uh, seeing you all on Wednesday uh, evening. I have a fresh word for you. And uh, David just shared something, says, hey, it's exactly what I needed today. Praise God, David. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. Um, hey, uh, the other thing to do is take some time today uh, and encourage somebody. Um, let God make that happen. Maybe somebody just comes to your mind right away. Um, go ahead and take the time to contact them and to encourage them in the way that you know, you know, that they, they can receive it. And, um, and thank you for being, you know, the Father's house. You, you are very, very special people, um, especially to me, especially to my wife. Uh, thank you for praying for us. Uh, thank you for praying for our family. Your prayers are effective and they work. Amen. Ben and Peter says, thanks, Pastor E, for an awesome word. I, I can only see awesome, but I, I believe it's probably word after that. <laughs> God is awesome, Peaches and Ben. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And thank you all for being wonderful and awesome in Jesus Christ. God bless you. I love you. And uh, go ahead and unmute and say bye to one another. <laughs> no trickling today. No trickling. Yeah. No trickling. That's the part of this. Thank you. Thank you.